Right now is the perfect time to buy Kyler Murray in Anthony Richardson in your dynasty leagues. We'll tell you why in this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started. Welcome back. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can also read her over at Yahoo. And it's a Wednesday episode, so of course that means that Matt Williamson is here. You can follow him on Twitter at Williamson NFL. On today's show, we're going to give you six players that you should be trading for Right now, before week one kicks off, that does not give you a lot of time to make these deals, but you can get them done. Matt, let's start at quarterback. Who are the one or two quarterbacks that you are trying to acquire right now before the season starts? Well, I'm not trying to come in third place in my league. I'm not trying to come in fifth. I mean, I'm swinging for the fences, especially a quarterback, because it's an easily replaceable position. I want guys with monster upside with monster athletic ability, early draft picks, draft capital. And for that reason, I'm going with Kyler Murray and Anthony Richardson. You know, we've seen more than glimpses, well, glimpses in Richardson's case, but uh, of massive fantasy production from both these guys. And to back that up even further, I think the offensive systems and coaching staffs that are in charge of these two young men are exceptional and underrated as well in Indianapolis and Arizona. Kate, what are your thoughts? I will say I have been kind of the skeptic here on Anthony Richardson and Marcus, we have been talking lately about our just kind of these little points of hesitancy that were coming about in terms of Anthony Richardson for dynasty specifically. Now, obviously I am in full agreement with you, Matt, that you need to swing for the fences at this position. There has seemingly never been more depth at the quarterback position seemingly never been more depth at tight end either. Like we're in a absolute moment of riches, but Anthony Richardson's the one I have a harder time grasping just because of that uncertainty of what the floor is in terms of the passing game and what that can do for longevity in terms of his NFL career, not necessarily the upside of like when he's starting. And I think the perfect example of that is current Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback, Justin Fields. Matt, make the case. Make the case for Anthony Richardson as a guy that you want to acquire right now. He's 260 pounds. He has the best relative athletic score in quarterback combine history. He's going to have a long leash. Um, I mean, any of these quarterbacks can flop. I mean, Fields is a great example. Trey Lance. I mean, there's guys that didn't even get as far as Fields that could absolutely flop. But one thing... And I don't know if this will come to fruition with, with Richardson, but when I was a scout for the Browns way back when, it was like common knowledge that quarterbacks don't get more accurate in the league. If they are if they lack accuracy at the college level, it's only going to get worse, Bad. No one's getting better in, in the accuracy department. That's changed drastically. Mm -hmm. You know, Josh Allen, Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts, on and on and on. And my logic behind why I think that is are all these private quarterback coaches and biometrics and things that I don't understand, you know, that if you just do this, if you bend your knee, just three degrees different, you're going to have more shock absorber and better accuracy. Okay. I'll practice that all off season. I also think there's like an element of coaching that maybe I, yeah. I think there's like this, this semi new movement in the league where coaches are suddenly adapting to create and build systems around their quarterbacks. Like we saw that firsthand with like Lamar Jackson, for instance, like, was he Joe Flacco? No, but they, it didn't matter because they, they kind of curated this system of coaching and, and play calling around him. And maybe that is, you know, kind of 
one of these things where it's like you, you know, coaches are becoming a little bit more adaptable in, in mm -hmm. terms of like figuring out how to mask these problems on the scouting report once they come into the league. I also but think all those are fair points. Yeah. And I think Pittman and Downs are very quarterback friendly options. You know, they're not hard throws. A.D. Mitchell's a player I like a lot as well. And by all accounts, Richardson is smart, hardworking, and ultra talented. He seems to stay on the field and become more accurate. And if he could even do one of the two would go a long way. Matt, I want to go to Kyler because I, I agree with you on Richardson, but I'm actually more likely to go trade for Kyler for a million different reasons. Mm -hmm. But I thought Kyler was pretty good last year down the stretch. I, I mean, too. Last four games fun. were really good. Yeah, and, and he was throwing to – I mean, Trey McBride and my guy, Greg Dorch, and that's basically it, right? And it's not like that we haven't seen Kyler be super successful mm -hmm. previously before, right? Like 2020, 2020 and 2021, he put up big numbers. I, I guess what I don't understand is why is there such a big gap in like ADP between Richardson and Kyler? Because right now we have Anthony Richardson, QB6 over at Dynasty League Football. Kyler is QB7, but you're talking about like more than – a round and a half difference between those two quarterbacks. And I kind of just think Kyler's the better player. And I think the upside is just as high. And he's safer and he's done it. And uh, I mean, I think he's the better passer. He's more accomplished. He's also in a great situation. I think that mm -hmm. offensive staff is excellent. The only thing I can come to is, you know, people like the bright, shiny new thing. And frankly, Richardson is, 60 pounds heavier than him. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think well, there's like something you said inches for that. taller than him. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think Kyler's a really good NFL quarterback that we've kind I of forgot about because he's missed most of last year. Kate, what are your thoughts on Kyler going into the year? I'm definitely more into the idea of trading for Kyler right now. I do think, you know, despite the fact that yes, people are, are really excited for Marvin Harrison jr. They're excited about Trey McBride. I still think there's this element of uncertainty, right? Like there were kind of these rumblings that like maybe, maybe Arizona's not totally sold on Kyler Murray. Maybe they're going to have a wandering eye at the quarterback position. Maybe they're not as all in on Murray as we thought they were. So like, I think we can still capitalize on some of that energy paired with like, you know, just the fact that yes, we know conceptually, Marvin Harrison Jr. will be on the football field. We know conceptually that will be really good for Murray's floor as a passer. We know he's got the rushing upside, but like you haven't seen it yet. And that's why I think he's like one of these perfect trade targets just in terms of like value, because again, the, the conjecture is one thing, but once you actually see it with your eyes, it makes it a lot more difficult to get these deals down in the books. I already think Anthony Richardson right now, kind of a hard guy to trade for. Like he's not a guy that I see being moved very often in any of my dynasty leagues, because I think people are kind of grasping onto this QB one upside with, you know, very tightly wound fingers. I have one more note on Kyler, which is more redraft, but I've been targeting Cardinals a lot because mm -hmm especially for this year, because I think their defense is horrific and they're going to be in a lot of shootouts. Yeah, their defense, especially their defensive line, is in oh. really rough shape. Um, they lo already lost B.J. Old Jolari, their second-year edge rusher. Darius Robinson, their first-round pick, is on the PUP list. Like, they could get into some shootouts. And this is why I think you should go trade for him now. They play like Buffalo in week one. I'm not sold on Buffalo's defense. No, I could see Kyler putting up a huge game and the Cardinals losing. And then all of a sudden, that's the quarterback that everybody wants to go get after week one. So go trade for him now before the price goes up. Let's talk about some running backs that you should try to acquire before week one. We will get to those guys next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. It's the only sports book that I use when I make my bets for the NFL season. But we've got something different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube in YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you're going to be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. 
Like take me for example, I'm a Cowboy fan living in Pennsylvania without Sunday ticket. I would never be able to watch my teams play. That's why I've had it for over 15 years. It's absolutely fantastic. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment and you can cancel anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We want to let you know that the new Locked On NFL show is here. Locked On NFL is now two shows every single day. First, the Mad Men Tyler Rowland kicks you off in the morning with a double shot of NFL espresso. And then stop by the barbershop with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. Add in the Locked On local experts and you get unprecedented NFL insight, hot opinions, detailed breakdowns, all in 30 minutes. It's the new lot on NFL, and it's twice a day. Make the madman Tyler Rowland and the barber Tony Wing is your second listen at the Lot NFL show on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. All right, we are back here discussing some trade targets ahead. Marcus, of real quick, I'm, I'm yeah. going to be doing once a week with Wiggins on every Friday, too. Perfect. On Locked on NFL. The, the, the show I started way back when, the first ever NFL show I started. See, that's, that's fantastic. See, so go, go listen more of Matt. That's absolutely great. Um, all right, Matt, let's talk about some trade targets uh, okay. at the running back position. Who do you got? Devon Chan to me is a huge one. And again, I'm not, I'm, I'm swinging for the fences. And I understand, much like Richardson, he scares people. He's going to get hurt. He's too little. You know, Kyler's too little. I get that. But the league is becoming more basketball on grass. I think he's a special player. I don't think Mostert will be in his way for long. I, I do think they're going to get him more design touches in the passing game. I think they're really looking for a third receiver. You know, outside you know who of the Hill third Ross. receiver is right now for Miami? My, my boy, Johnny Smith. I've been driving, grabbing him everywhere I can. That's uh, my do, you know, do you know who the third receiver is right now for Miami? It's not Odell, and I don't think it's Malik Washington, right? It's probably a shade, right? Like, that's probably yeah. – oh, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, like – They've been cycling through these guys. They drafted Taj Washington. Odell mm -hmm. Beckham is out for at least the first four games. Uh, I think they signed Grant Dubois or Dubois from the Packers uh, to put right on. Always the really good when you have no idea how to pronounce the guy's name. It's Grant, <laughs> Grant from the Packers, right? Who was I think a seventh round pick this year? Like they need receivers bad, and Devon just might be the third best receiver on this offense. I think he'll do more in the passing game, more receiver routes, things like that that obviously result in fantasy points. Is he going to average 1,000 yards per touch? No. I mean, that's going to come down. But I think his volume will go up. And people are probably going, but he's too little for that. He's not skinny skinny. You know, he's no. not, you know, Dexter he's McCluster. Dense. Yeah, he's a thicker guy. And I'm old enough to remember when people said the same thing about Austin Eckler, Jamal Charles. You know, those guys are... Uh, Chris Johnson. These guys are only part-time players, and then they win your league for you. I, I would also add in there, Matt, we have receivers right now in the NFL that are 170 pounds that had yeah. fantastic rookie seasons between Tank Dell and Jordan Addison. So I, I'm not overly concerned about a 190-pound Devon A. Chain running some routes if need be. Agreed. And it's a great offense. Kate. Yeah, I actually, I'm going to surprise you here because I've been, you know, the biggest A. Chan critic uh, of all time, but I actually do think that there's a better case to be made for trading for a Chan in dynasty leagues right now than there is to be acquiring him in redraft at his round two, round three draft capital in redraft leagues. Like I think Raheem Mostert is going to be a real problem um, just because of the fact that uh, you look at the fact that like Raheem Mostert, Jalen Wright, both bigger options that you would probably prefer along the goal line, which we know those are some of the most valuable touches in fantasy. Yes. A Chan is probably going to be running the most routes out of these running backs, but you know what? It's going to be a little bit harder for him to earn targets on those routes run when you've got Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, uh, you know, also presumably running routes. Like I, I like a Chan, the player, but I'm going to feel a lot better once I can feel a little bit more assured that Mostert isn't going to ruin my life. And I, I think, you know, the, the trope that like Jalen Wright is kind of the heir apparent to Raheem Mostert, that feels like 
a reasonable outcome. And once there's one fewer body in the mix, which I'm going to project like next year, most are, will be less of a problem than here this season. Like, yeah, the, the sky is the limit for a Chan. Yeah. And I also mentioned, this is the cheapest that he's been over the last six months. He's down to RB nine, 26 overall. Again, you're still pre- paying a premium price, but he's no longer RB six, RB seven. So I do think this is a good opportunity to buy him. Okay. There's another running back that I know that you're really excited about. Uh, can you tell us who, who you're trying to acquire right now? I'm still going all in on Trey Benson. I think this is actually the perfect time to go all in because, uh, you know, Cardinals OC came out this week and was like, yeah, James Connors, our guy, James Connors, is our workhorse, which great. Um, I would love for that to scare off any Trey Benson manager. You know why? Cause that was never not my expectation to begin with. I mm-hmm. never once expected that Trey Benson was going to assume this workhorse role in an offense for the Arizona Cardinals coming off of James Connors best career season by not even like a little bit, like, he had a career year last year and it was, he was one of the best and most underrated running backs in the national football league. Health continues to be a problem, but like when he was on the field last year, he was out there looking like a a pro bowl running back that maybe you saw in like year two in the Pittsburgh Steelers offense, year three, like he looked like a, a spring chicken with a lot of axes to grind. So like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that, but what I do want is Trey Benson there in the waiting. James Connors on the final year of his contract. I highly doubt they're going to extend him again, heading into his what age 30 season. Like, no, it, Trey Benson, you know, despite having kind of an up and down offseason program, like he still seems to be the number two. They have Amari DiMarcado. They have like some other options, but like I still think long term. Benson has the skill, has the draft capital, has this incredibly uh, just enticing skill set from an athletic perspective that is going to earn him touches in the long run to, I think, take over as the RB1 in what I project to be a pretty good offense in the NFL. Matt, your thoughts? I'm all in on the Cardinals. Uh, The one thing I didn't mention with with Kyler is it might be Not obvious to the untrained eye, but they've invested a lot in offensive linemen. You know, I mean, there are a lot of bodies there as well as an early pick in Paris Johnson, and their center is a much better player than people think. And and I'm with Kate. You know, this is not much of a roadblock for Benson. I think Connor only this year is going to get in his way and only until he gets injured this year, which will probably happen. Maybe week one, maybe week 11. Who knows? And I have great respect for James Conner and the way he plays, and I think he's really playing at a high level. My slight concern with this call is I don't think Benson's looked as good in the preseason as I thought he would as a prospect. He is big. He is fast. He tested well. But I saw a little stiffness and lack of fluidity. But all he he needs is volume. And it's not that hard to imagine him getting volume at some right. point this year and certainly by 2025. So I do think this is a good time to buy um, because down to RB 16 in dynasty league football, ADP, I think that's a very reasonable price. All right, let's uh, go to the receiver position because there are a couple of receivers out there that we think are going to have massive starts to the year. Let's discuss Jackson Smith at Jigba and Rome Adunze next. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. It's the formula for winning championships, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts available for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. 
eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We are breaking down these six trade targets that you need to go acquire before week one. And we're going over to the wide receiver position. And Matt, I cannot wait for the, your uh, your name here at wide receiver. Who do you got? I have two. I have JSN in Seattle and I have Roma Dunze in, in Chicago for similar reasons. I, I mean, Smith Najigba was clearly my number one receiver in last year's draft. And I thought he was misused. I thought he was trying to jump on a moving train as an injured rookie, which is really hard to do. I go back to an elite three cone and shuttle, yep. the ability to shake guys and get open, gain separation. And I don't think he was used downfield nearly enough. Tyler Lockett, I think, is nearly a shell of himself. And, and he's dealing with a knee injury right now. He yeah, hardly right, practiced right. at all in training camp. Yep. I think there's a misconception that both these players are currently the number three on their team. I would say that's very much not for long. Uh, even Metcalf is a nice player, but they have a lot of cap issues. I could even see him getting moved in the offseason, potentially. And I think he's a certain type of player. I don't know that Metcalf's ever going to be a high-volume target, you know, well, hound. I mean, it, you know. And can I jump in really quick? I just, yeah, just want to mention, their, their first three games, Broncos, Patriots, Dolphins. You look at those three teams, they all have like number one outside cornerbacks with mm -hmm. Patrick Sertan, Christian Gonzalez, and Jalen Ramsey. I would assume, and I could be wrong, that all those corners are probably going to be matching up with DK Metcalf on the outside, probably. right? And that just leaves favorable matchups and probably a lot of targets for JSN early on in the season. I, I kind of think now is the time to buy before he has like mm -hmm. 27 targets through the first three weeks of the season. I 100% agree, and I think he's very capable of 100-catch seasons. Um, as for Adunze, he was not my favorite receiver in this draft, but he would have been my favorite receiver in 8 out of 10 drafts. You know, I mean, it just happened to be two superstars ahead of him, and I think he gets unjustly compared to neighbors and Harrison, and that really doesn't matter at all. I think Adunze, to me, is still extremely valuable, tied to what looks like a promising quarterback. Keenan Allen's a minor roadblock, like a Lockett or a Connor that we talked about. And DJ Moore's a really good player, but that doesn't really worry me. Kate, what are your thoughts on these two? Roma Dunze, um, I'm just going to say, was my wide receiver too in this class. Mm. And yeah, Malik Neighbors might have a quicker pathway to a 150-plus target season just because he's literally – the only wide receiver with a heartbeat in that room, but still you have to adjust that total target volume to account for some of the miscues that are inevitable when it happens to be Daniel Jones, a quarterback. So like I, I'm still all in on Roma Dunze, the, the pairing to Caleb Williams, who already seems to have taken a like into him in this like scramble drill situation, which Caleb Williams is like in a, always in a scramble drill somehow like he always just scoots out of the pocket extends the play and it seems like Rome is the guy he's looking for so like I think you know Rome perfect guy to target because of that uncertainty Keenan Allen he's on a one-year deal like he's also old I'm not I'm not considering him a roadblock in what I think should be a pretty good passing attack in the years to come so all in on Rome also all in on JSN. I just, I can't, um, I can't fathom fading a guy who was so, so good in college that he was mm. the better prospect on the field over a Garrett Wilson, over a Chris Olave. And we're fading him. What? Cause he had 600 plus receiving yards as a rookie and he didn't post a, a Puka Nakua season. The roadmap wasn't there for him to post a Puka Nakua season. The the Seahawks passing game, not productive enough. I love um, the the shift in offensive scheme toward the Ryan Grubb offense. Like all arrows are pointing up for JSN. I think these are two of my favorite trade targets in Dynasty right now. And I actually wasn't the one that proposed either of them in the show sheet. So like. Thank you, boys, for doing the work <laughs> for me. Uh, I, I just want to mention really quickly. I actually traded for JSN yesterday at a league. Um, Debo Samuel 
for JSN. Oh, sorry, Debo Samuel in a second round pick for JS. Oh, sorry, let me get that backwards. I acquired JSN in a second round pick for Debo Samuel, which just goes to show you where JSN's value is right now. He's yeah. being drafted as wide receiver 30. A couple other recent trades include Jackson Smith and Jigba for DeAndre Swift in a second round pick. Jackson Smith and Jigba for Brock Bowers straight up. Jackson Smith and Jigba in a uh, in a first round pick for Jalen Waddell. I think you can get him pretty cheap. I think I'd take him in every one of those deals, to be honest. Yeah. And the deal you made, I'll predict right now that he's worth more than Debo 365 days from now. I, I mean, I, I, I don't even I think believe it's it. that long. And, yeah. And, 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 Debo, and Debo restructured his contract, which makes him more likely to stay in San Fran in 2025. Mm -hmm. But with the addition of Brandon Ayuk, Ricky Pearsall will be on the field at some point. It's just, I do wonder like what Debo is going to look like by the time he gets to age 28, 29, you know? So, so I, Listen, I was thrilled that somebody sent me that offer. I was I was tickled. Uh, Matt, one one quick, more Seattle uh, note, or two more Seattle notes. I think Geno Smith's a much better football player than given credit for. I, I think he's at least an average starting quarterback, and that's pretty high praise, if not more. I think he's a really good player that fits his system, aggressive downfield passer. And maybe more importantly, Seattle's going to run more plays. I mean, their play volume is so bad lately that it's hard to – you know, feed a lot of mouse in that offense. I think that's going to go up. Yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, Kate, any final thoughts on these two wide receivers before we head out? No, just go by. Bye. Go by. Send the <laughs> offer because you know what? Even if, uh, even if it's a no, you never know until you you go try. And I do think that once we see both of these wide receivers on the football field this year, as is the case with all the players that we've talked about, whether or not we see them in week one or later on in the season. Once we see them in action, I do think that all of these guys are players that you are going to wish you yes. had sent an offer for right, right before we got off the action. All right, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty Football your first listen every single day. Go check out the new Locked On NFL show. Matt Williamson will be appearing on that show. A little breaking news every <laughs> Friday, correct, with Tony? Is that right, yeah, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so go check that out. Uh, go follow Matt wherever uh, you follow people on Twitter. He's at Williamson NFL. Go check out his YouTube channel as well. Go follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.